In this video, we're going to be talking about ROS parameters. ROS runs a parameter server, which can keep track of named values that can be set and read by any node in the system. This gives us a way to tweak values for our nodes without actually having to change their code. To get started working with ROS parameters, let's open up TurtleSim and see what we can do with the ROS param command line tool. So let's open up a terminal, source our setup files, and ROS run TurtleSim TurtleSim node. Now in a new tab, again with our source files set up, we can play around with the ROS param command. And it should be no surprise that the first subcommand is ROS param list. This command lists out all the parameters that are in the ROS parameter server right now. We can see a few parameters here that are global to our whole ROS system, and then we can see three parameters that are associated with our turtle sim node. Notice that parameter names follow the same namespacing system as other elements in our ROS graph. If I want to check the values of one of these parameters, I can use the command ROS param get and give it the name of the parameter. So here we can see the value of background B parameter for our turtle sim node is 255. I can also set the value of a ROS parameter using ROS param set. So in this case, let's set the turtle sim background B parameter to zero, but nothing happened. Most nodes only check their parameters when they first start up. There's a whole other system for parameters that need to be continuously updated called dynamic reconfigure, but we won't worry about that for this video. But now that we do have that parameter set, let's go ahead and close turtle sim and restart it. You'll notice that the background color has changed to reflect the parameter we set. And this demonstrates an important property about parameters in ROS. ROS parameters are tied to the lifetime of the server, and thus to the lifetime of the ROS master, not to the lifetime of the individual node that may have introduced that parameter. So because we set that background B parameter to a new value, when the turtle sim node relaunched, there were already values for all of its parameters. It read them from the parameter server and drew the correct background color for us. If we want to reset that parameter, we can close turtle sim, run the command ROS param delete turtle sim background B, and then restart turtle sim. This time when turtle sim started up, it didn't see the parameter background B because we deleted it from the parameter server. So it had to recreate it with its default value. And so we get the default background color back. The last command we'll look at today is ROS param dump. The dump subcommand lets us save parameters from our current system into a YAML file. We can use it by running ROS param dump, then we give it the name of the file we want to write to. I'll call it turtleparams.yaml. And then optionally, we can give it the namespace for the parameters we actually care about, so that we're not saving all parameters for the entire system when we don't need to. So I'll give it the turtle sim namespace. Now, if I take a look at that turtle params YAML file, I'll see that it contains YAML defining the three parameters that were within that turtle sim namespace, the RGB colors for our background. Now that we know how to use ROS parameters from the command line, let's add a parameter to one of our custom C++ nodes. So I'll close out our turtle sim work and this extra tab. And now ROS CD into RJ training and open up source slash talker.cpp. Let's add a parameter that controls the text that our talker node publishes. To do this, I'm going to add a string variable called greeting. And in my while loop where we populate the data field for our string message, I'm going to get rid of the constant that we put there. And instead, I'm going to set it to the value of greeting. Now to initialize greeting, I need to ask our node handle to get a parameter. There's a couple ways to do this, but one way is to call the param function on our node handle. So we'll write node handle dot param. We need to tell it the type of the parameter that we're trying to retrieve. In this case, it's a string parameter, so I'll give it std string. Then we need to give it the name of the parameter. We'll call our parameter greeting. And then we give it a default value, which we'll leave at hello. Now, if we were to run this code right now, we would get a parameter called greeting at the global namespace level. This is because the namespace of our parameter is controlled by the node handle. And all node handles default to using the global namespace. This is also why our talker topic lives at the global namespace level. Since we want our greeting parameter to be within our node's namespace, we need to create a new node handle that is associated with that namespace. This is a really common pattern and it's often referred to as a private node handle. 
To create it, I'm going to create a new variable of type Ross node handle. I'm going to name it private node handle. And I'm going to call the constructor for this object and give it the namespace that we want it to be associated with. Remember when we were first talking about namespaces and we talked about how the tilde is a shortcut that gets translated to our node's private namespace. This is exactly how we use that tilde in our code. Now we need to go down to the initialization for our greeting variable and make sure that it's using our private node handle. Now that's all the code we need to add our parameter to our talker node. So we can save and close this document, go up to our Catkin workspace, and build our code. Everything built, so we're ready to go. Now to set the value of our parameter in a more convenient way, we can actually set it in the launch file. So let's go back into our RJ training package and open up our launch file, conversation.launch. Let's split up our node tag so we can add children to it. And within it, we'll add a param tag, give it an attribute name where we specify the name of our parameter, in this case, greeting and a value, which contains the value. So we'll give it a new greeting to say. And then we can close that tag. The param tag lets us set the value of a parameter when we start our launch file. By making the param tag a child of the node tag, Ross Launch will set that parameter inside the namespace for that node, which is exactly what we want. So now we can save and close this file and start up our conversation nodes by running ross launch rj training conversation.launch and we see that we're now getting our new greeting message printed out on the console now setting parameters in the launch file works great and you'll see it very regularly but it can get a little unwieldy if you have a lot of parameters for a single node in those times it can be useful to separate our parameters into separate files to keep our launch files readable. ROS launch gives us a way to load YAML parameter files, just like the ones that we saved with ROS param dump. So let's go ahead and move our greeting parameter out of our conversation launch file and into a separate config file. In our RJ training package, I'm going to make a directory called config. And in that directory, I'm going to create a file called talker.yaml. This file will save all the parameters for our talker node. I need to start this file by defining the namespace for our parameters. I can do that by adding a YAML object called talker. And then within there, we'll define our greeting parameter and set our new custom greeting string. And that's all we'll need for this config file that specifies a greeting parameter inside of the talker namespace. Now we can save and close that file. Go back into our RJ training directory and open up our launch file, conversation.launch. Now, because we're loading our parameters from a YAML file, we no longer need this param child tag. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and collapse the node tag. And above the node tag, we'll add a ROS param tag. We'll tell it we're trying to load a file by giving it the attribute command set to load. And then we can give it the path we want to load with the file attribute. Now file paths in launch files are not defined relative to wherever the launch file is. So you'll want to specify most paths in launch files relative to the package path that they're in. To do this, we can use a special expression to ask ROS launch to find the RJ training package. And then wherever it finds that relative to that path, it will look in the config directory for a talker.yaml file. So this find expression will have ROS launch look for the path associated with the RJ training package and then append the rest of the path to the package path. This kind of find expression to create a path inside of a ROS launch file is very common. But with that, our launch file is ready to go. So we can save and close this file. And if we ROS launch RJ training conversation.launch, we'll again see our new custom greeting but this time it's not being specified in the launch file itself, it's being read from our YAML config file. So that's the basics of using ROS parameters. In our C++ code, we use the param method on our node handle to get at our parameter. There are actually a couple other methods in the node handle class that will also help you get parameter values or check for their existence. Hasparam, for example, simply checks if the parameter exists and returns a Boolean. And the getParam method lets you request a parameter without a default value and will return false if it can't find that parameter. To learn how to use these other methods, 
check out the class reference documentation for the node handle class. But that's it for this video. We've gotten a hands-on introduction to ROS parameters and seen how they can help us tweak our node behavior without editing and recompiling our code.